What's going on, everyone? It's Jamison from NYC Tech Club coming to you live from Hudson Yards. So there's going to be a bunch of construction going on, so you might hear some jackhammer noise, but I don't want that to be a reason why I don't make this video tutorial, so we're just going to do it anyways. I have my laptop right here, so I will be looking away from the computer quite a bit or from the video camera, but we're going to have this camera as a video picture in picture thing on the corner of the screen. So we'll make this a little interactive. And before we go any further, this video is going to be how to use WordPress. So Gutenberg or the new software WordPress version Gutenberg came out at the end of last year, early this year. And a lot of people are a little bit confused about it. It took me a little while to get used to it. There are some changes with these blocks that they allow you to create now. Some buttons are gone. And so I just wanted to create a new video tutorial on how to use WordPress for beginners, intermediate, advanced people. It doesn't really matter what your level is. If you want to learn how to use WordPress, go ahead and watch this video and I'm going to show you how. So let's just jump right into the screen. And this is a blog website that I created on the NYC Tech Club YouTube channel. It's a video tutorial step-by-step -step showing you how to create this website. So if you want to create something like this, you can always go and check out one of our video tutorials. This is a site that's hosted on HostGator and it uses WordPress.org. And you want to make sure that you're using WordPress.org to follow this video tutorial because there are two versions of WordPress, WordPress.com and WordPress.org. WordPress.com is the free version and we have another video tutorial on how to use that. But this one is for everyone that uses a hosting service and installs WordPress on their website. So what I want you to do is log into your WordPress website. So I'm on the login page right here. And typically the login address is your domain name.com slash WP dash admin. So go ahead and come here and then type in your username and your password. And then you should just log right in. And once we're logged in, this is the WordPress dashboard. And this is the main, I guess, home base, you can say, for your entire WordPress website. This is where you're going to go to customize the theme or the layout, the colors, the font settings. This is where you're going to go to create pages and posts and upload media. You can go and reply to comments. You can go and install some additional plugins. You can change your password. You can create some additional users. And you can go into your settings to change the tagline, the website name, the URLs, the permalinks, and all that stuff. So whatever I just said right now, don't get too confused because we are going to cover everything in this video tutorial. Even though this video might not be super long, you're going to get a really good idea of everything that WordPress allows you to do. And you should be able to go off and run and create your own site and do whatever you want by the end of this video. So in this section, what I do want to do is just talk about the dashboard. So the screen that you see right here. So right at the top, you can see that you're logged in because you have your username on the upper right and you can always log out by clicking on log out. And then on the left hand side, you should see your website name and you ha you can hover over this and you can click on visit site. And then what that's going to do is just bring you to your website. So if I go to this really quickly, you'll see that our website loads. So it looks like just exactly like what I showed you, but we have this top bar because we're logged in and there are some shortcuts up here. So you can cl click on this to create a new post, a page or you can hover over your website name and you can go back to your WordPress dashboard, which is what I want to do. So once we're back on the WordPress dashboard, let me just show you some other stuff. So you should see this notification right here and you can customize your site. We're going to do that in a little bit. You can change your theme. I'm going to talk about themes in just a little bit. And then you can write your first blog post, add a page. You can go to your settings. We're going to do all of this stuff in this video tutorial. You can also customize your sidebar, which is where you're going to drag some widgets. And then you also have the option of creating menus such as your header menu and your footer menu. So we'll go through all of this stuff, but just down here, there is a section called WordPress events and news. So if you ever want to know what WordPress is up to, what updates they have, this is where you would go to see all of that stuff. And then over here you have at a glance, so you can see how many blog posts and pages that you've created for your website. You can see the version of WordPress that you're running right here. And then you have your activity right here or recent activity. 
Okay, so your dashboard is, again, your home base. It's where all of your buttons are to go to do different stuff, such as creating posts, pages, uploading videos, images, photos, documents, and where you can go to change your themes, go into your customized tabs. You can add menus, customize your widgets, install plugins, go to your users and change the password and your settings and all that stuff. And if my dashboard looks a little different than yours, it's because, again, I created a blog website with this domain already. So I do have some plugins already installed. So you can see that I have a tab down here called MailChimp for WordPress. And you probably won't see that unless you install that plugin. So we're going to talk about what plugins are, what themes are, how to create pages and posts and all that stuff. But this was just a general overview of what your WordPress dashboard is. So if you have any questions about the dashboard, let me know. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next step. And what I want to do is talk about your username and how you can secure your username by changing your password or adding additional users and all that stuff. So if you're ready, we're just going to move on to the next step. So now what I want to do on the WordPress dashboard is I want to come down and show you how to use the users tab. So if you hover over users, you can click on all users. And what that's going to do is bring you to the users page and you should see a list of all your users. So right now we have one user right here called admin and the role is administrator. So that's the highest level of access. So you can do everything such as customize your website, create blog posts, pages, and really just do anything that you want with this role. You can create some additional roles such as someone that just can be a subscriber so they can just log in, a contributor so they can write blog posts, or you can create someone that has admin access. What I want to do right now is just show you how you can change your password and you can update your profile. So we have our username right here. Let's go and click on the edit link right here. And once you're on the add new user page, all you have to do is create a username and then an email address that's going to be associated with this username. And you can fill out this other stuff if you want. And what you want to do is just have this box checked right here. So when you do create the username, it's going to send an email to this email address that you put in right here with the login information and the username. So you don't have to save the password, but I do recommend saving the password. And then down here where you see role, this is where you can select whether or not you want the user to have admin access, editor access, author access, contributor or subscriber. So subscriber has the most limited access and then admin is the highest level that can do pretty much anything on your WordPress website. So you want to select those carefully. And then all you have to do is click add new user and that's how you create a new user. So that's all we're going to talk about for users. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, what we're going to do is move on to the next step, which is going to be talking about themes for WordPress. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about WordPress and themes. And a theme is a template that lets you customize your WordPress website. There are a bunch of different types of themes. You can build a website for pretty much anything with WordPress nowadays. And with a theme, you can customize the colors, the layouts. You can use page builders, different plugins. So themes are pretty much the skeleton of your WordPress website. And there's a bunch of different ones that you can choose from. So what we want to do is go to the WordPress themes page so I can show you where you can find a theme. So we're going to hover over appearance over here and we want to click on themes. And once you're on the themes page, you should see a few default themes and you probably have one activated for your own WordPress website right now because WordPress installs a theme for you by default. And I'm using a premium theme for my WordPress website right now for the blog website that you see. So when I say premium, I say, I mean that you have to pay for this. And usually you pay for a theme if you want some additional functionality or some compatibility. But a lot of the themes that you can use are free and they'll be just as good. So what I want to do is just show you where you can find a really good free WordPress theme so on the themes page, what we can do is click on the wordpress.org themes. And what this is going to do is bring us to a themes page where a bunch of developers have created different themes for different types of websites. And we can just select one of these and use it for free. 
So on this page right here, you can see right at the top, you can filter by different categories. So if you want to say some featured themes or popular themes or the latest themes, you can just select these right here. And then down at the bottom over here, um, actually not at the bottom, over here you can just search for different themes by their names if you want. So we can go to the popular tab right here and it'll populate a bunch of different themes, the latest ones right here. And again, there are over, I guess, 7,119 themes that you can choose from right here on this page. And you can just keep scrolling and scrolling and you'll see a bunch of different themes. And if you like any of these, what you can do is just click on the details and preview and you'll get this little pop-up page right here. And you can read a little bit about this theme and you can see what it's all about. So right here you can see that we have the theme and what it looks like. You can always go to the theme developers page and probably see a demo. But really quickly at a glance right here, you can see that we have the font styles that we can choose from or the fonts that are going to be for this theme, the colors, and then just kind of like the formatting. And if we like it, we can click install. If we don't like it, we can just close out of this and we can go and find another one, click on this, and then see if we like this one right here. So what I want to do is I want to just show you how you can install a theme really quickly, but you can always pause this video and go and find your own theme. Again, there are themes for pretty much any type of website that you want to make. Photography, blog, e-commerce, general business, whatever you want, you can just search and you'll find a good theme. This is where you can find any free theme. And the theme that I want is called the Cali theme by A themes. So I'm going to type in, in the search box right here, Cali. And then I want this one right here. So if you want to install a theme, you can just hover over it and click on install. And then you'll see that this is installing right here. And once it's installed, you'll get this activate button. And you want to activate this in order to make it live or useful for your WordPress website. And you can only activate one theme at a time, but you can always install or download as many different themes as you want. But again, only one theme works at a time. So now that we have activated this Cali theme, we can go and check out what the theme does to my website. So let me just show you again, the original website that I have with the Redwood theme, which is the premium theme looks like this. And I just installed the Cali theme. So I'm gonna go back to this tab right here. And now if I click on visit site, you're gonna see that my website looks completely different. And that's because I'm using a different theme with a different style and layout and you can see that we have a header right here. The formatting for the text looks a little different. And then the slider section with my blog post looks a little different up here. And then down here, this also looks different based on the theme that I'm using. So you can choose any type of theme that you want. There's no right or wrong one. You can always just play around with them and find one that you really like. And once you do, you're good to go. So that's how you can find and install a theme. And I'm going to go back to the themes page really quickly just to kind of talk about this a little bit more. So you do have premium themes. And by premium, I mean that you have to pay for these. So if I click on this tab right here, these ones are going to be from a marketplace. And you can see that these ones cost money. But usually these have some more additional functionality. So if you don't find a theme that you like for free, then you can always come here and find a premium theme. Same goes with plugins and other stuff also. So you can search for the wordpress.org themes. You can also just download a theme. And if you want to upload it on your own, which is going to be a zip file, just click on upload and then click on upload theme. And then just come here and click choose file. And then you can install or I guess, up, what is it? Update or upload the theme by zip file and then install it. So that's pretty much all there is to themes. You can really find whatever theme that you want. And again, there are themes for every type of website. So don't feel too overwhelmed. It does take some time to find the perfect theme and you know, you can always use one. And then if you don't like it after you've had your website for a little while, you can always choose another theme. So don't feel like you're married to a theme. I always change my themes. I always update my websites and that's what you should be thinking about too. Okay. So that's all we're going to talk about with themes. If you have any questions, if you have, um, 
any recommendations or you have a favorite theme, let me know in the comment section. If you need some recommendations, I can also recommend some themes. And we do use a lot of different themes on the MYC Tech Club YouTube channel to create different WordPress websites for free. And we also use some premium ones. So if you need some direction or anything like that, I'm more than happy to help you. But now what we're gonna do is move on to the next step, which is going to be talking about customizing our theme with the Customize tab where we can change the colors, the font styles, and maybe some layout options. So if you wanna do that, keep watching and I'll show you in the next section. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about how to customize our theme. So in the last section, what we did was we installed a theme called the Cali theme and you can install any theme. It doesn't have to be the same exact one, but if you wanna customize it, such as changing some of the formatting or the layout options, the colors, the font styles, and whatever else the theme developer lets you, what you wanna do is go to the Customize tab. So to do that, we're gonna hover over Appearance and then click on the Customize link. And once you're on this page right here, what you're gonna notice is that you probably have some tabs right here, and this is the Customize page. On the left-hand side of whatever theme that you're using, the theme developers, we'll have some tabs here for you to customize your theme with different colors and different font options and maybe different layout options. So it really depends on the theme that you're using. Not all themes are going to have the same tabs here. It's really at the discretion of the theme developer, but I can just show you really quickly how we can select some of these settings and you'll see on this preview screen right here how things change. So I can go into the color settings right here and you can see that I have the general option. So I can change the color of the background color for this entire website by just going in here and just selecting this blue color. And you can see on the preview screen, now the background color for this website is this color that I selected. And if you ever wanna go back to the default colors, you can just click on default right here. And if you do make any changes, what you wanna do is click on the blue button that says publish or save so that you save any of your settings. So you can see here that we have a bunch of different tabs. I don't wanna go through each of these tabs because they are different for each theme. So you might not even see the same tabs that I see if you're using a different theme. But if you have the site identity tab, you can upload your own logo. You can change the site title or the tagline, or you can add a favicon if you want. You can just click on these buttons right here to upload your own images and everything like that. Again, just make sure that you do click on the blue button to save your changes. And what I wanna do is just come down to the bottom. There is a section for you to add some CSS. So if you wanna customize your website with some custom code, you can always just paste that in right here and it should override the settings that you have for your theme. And on the preview page right here, you do have these buttons down here. So if you wanna check out what your website looks like on a PC or laptop, you wanna use this icon if you wanna look on a tablet device like an iPad, you can just click on this and then the mobile device looks like this. So you can check out to see if your site is responsive and if it's not, you can always go and change some stuff for these different devices, okay? And if you wanna hide this tab just to see what the website looks like on a full screen, you can click on this little button right here and you can also click on these links to go to different pages if you have them to check out what those pages look like. So this is the customized page of the WordPress theme, and it's where you can go to customize a lot of your settings and options for your website. And again, the tabs are gonna be different and very specific to the theme that you're using. So if you're using the Kali theme, you're gonna have these tabs, but if you're using another theme, you're gonna have different tabs potentially. And you can always go back in here and update stuff a little bit later. If you don't know what some of the stuff is, you can always leave a question in the comment section and I'll get back to you. But I just wanted to give you an overview of how to select your colors, your font styles, and whatever layout options that you have to customize your theme however you want. We're gonna cover some additional stuff that you see here a little bit later, such as creating menus and the widget section. So the widgets kind of cover the sidebar that you see here and sometimes at the bottom there's a footer section for widgets also. So we'll cover that stuff a little bit later, but if you want, you can play around with the custom options right here. And if you do make any changes, click on the publish button. Otherwise, what I'm gonna do is exit out of the screen and then we're gonna move on to the next step. So what I'm gonna do right now is just close out of this because we are done talking about the custom settings for your theme. 
And if you want, we'll just move on to the next thing that we're gonna cover. So let me just close this and I'll click OK right here. All right, so now you guys should be back on the WordPress dashboard and at least you should see the left-hand side over here with all these different tabs. And what I wanna do now is I wanna cover plugins. So what we can do is hover over plugins and just click on installed plugins. And really quickly, let me explain what a plugin is. So a plugin is a tool that lets you customize your WordPress website in different ways. So there's a bunch of different tools that you can choose from such as widgets for opt-in forms, contact forms, Facebook like boxes, Twitter feeds, Instagram feeds, SEO help or analytics, pretty much anything that you want. There's probably a plugin for. So there's security plugins and just plugins that help you customize your website such as page builders. So what you wanna do is find the plugins that you wanna use. And on this page right here, on the plugins page that we just came to, you can see that by default, there are some plugins already installed for you. And I also have some additional plugins because I created a WordPress blog already with some of these plugins. So you can see that some of these are deactivated. So the ones that say activate are deactivated. And if you don't wanna use them, you can always just click delete and remove them. They do take up a little bit of storage space on your server. So if you don't need them, you can always delete them. And you can see right here that I installed this one called Contact Form 7. And I also have a few other ones such as MailChimp for WordPress. And then down here we have the WP Super Cache. And what I'm gonna do is just put a list of plugins that I recommend to my viewers or the audiences that watch my tutorials. So that'll be in the video description. And if you want any of those, you can just go and download them. I'll show you how to search for them in just a little bit. But this is the main plugins page, and this is where you can always go to activate or deactivate or delete plugins. And if you wanna install a plugin, there are a bunch of free ones and there are also premium ones. And what I wanna do is just use the wordpress.org database to show you where you can find a bunch of free plugins. So what we can do is just hover over this button that says add new, and let's click on this. And what that's gonna do is bring us to the add plugins page right here. And again, just like the themes page, you can see there are filters right at the top. So you can filter by featured, popular, recommended. And then at the bottom over here, you can see there are a bunch of different popular tags. So what you can do is always search for plugins by the description name. So you can see if you want a Google SEO plugin, you can probably click on Google. You can also click on SEO on the right hand side over here. And there's Facebook, like boxes, gallery plugins, and you know pretty much everything. So even security, social widgets, WooCommerce, which is the e-commerce platform for WordPress. You can pretty much find anything that you want. You can use these popular tags or what you can do is search by keywords. So what I wanna do really quickly is just show you how you can install a plugin. So the plugin that I think would be good to install and one that I would probably recommend to you if you're watching my video tutorial is a Facebook like box because I think everyone has Facebook or a lot of people do and it's a good way to capture your audience's attention and re-engage them and everything like that. So what I'm gonna do is just come to the keyword search box over here and just type in Facebook like box and push enter and we're gonna get some search results that are gonna pop up and you can see that we have a bunch of different Facebook like box plugins right here. And these are created by a bunch of different developers. You can see that this one is created by Danish Ali Malik. And then this one is by SM Plugin. And what you'll notice on this page is that for each of these plugins, you can see the ratings and the number of people that have actively installed this. So they're currently using this plugin on WordPress. And I usually try to find one that has really high ratings and then a bunch of people using it because that usually means that a lot of people trust it. And you can see right here that it was just updated really recently and it's compatible with our version of WordPress. So you can go through this list and you can find a plugin that you want. You can always search for other ones and you can see there are a bunch of different pages with a bunch of Facebook plugins. So if you wanna install this one, all you have to do is click on this button right here that says install now and you can see that it's installing. And once it's done, we're gonna get an activate button. And all we have to do is just click on that button and now we can start using this plugin. So once the plugin is activated, we're gonna be brought back to the plugins page right here and you can see that it's activated. And now in my list, you can see that we have the easy Facebook like box. 
And what I'm going to do in just a little bit is show you how you can actually use this plugin. And there are a bunch of different ways that you can use plugins. It really depends on the one that you're using. This one we're going to use for our sidebar on our blog post pages. But something like the contact form, I would probably use on a contact us page. So it just really depends on the plugin. And you can always read up on the details for these plugins by clicking on view details right here. And sometimes you'll be redirected to the developer's website for support and everything like that. But that's all you have to do to install and activate a plugin. And again, there are a bunch of them and I will recommend some of them to you, including the contact form, the really simple SSL certificate plugin if you're using HostGator, and then some of these other ones also such as WP Instagram widget. So you can pause this video if you want, but really all I wanted to do here was just kind of show you how you can install plugins. Again, there are premium ones that you can buy and there are a bunch of free ones. So there's a plugin for anything that you need. And that's the great thing about WordPress. You have all these plugins to really support your website and help you customize it. So that's all we're going to do with plugins right here because every website is different and I can't really tell you which plugins that you need since you might be building a different type of website than the one that I'm building. But if you have any questions about plugins or you need recommendations, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them and recommend a stellar plugin for you. Okay, so if you're ready, we're just going to move on to the next step. And the next step is going to be talking about how to create pages. And pages are a little different than posts. Pages are static. So posts are blog posts or articles that really just show up on the blog post page or in a section of the home page or any other page. Posts are really, you know, about pages, services pages, the home page. They're really static and they kind of are the bulk of your WordPress website. I guess that's the best way I can explain it. But what I want to do is just show you how to create a page. So what you can do on the WordPress dashboard is hover over pages and click on add new or at the top over here, you have this shortcut where it says new and then you can click on page. So it doesn't matter which one that you do, just go ahead and click to create a new page and then I'll walk you through what that page looks like. And now you should be on the add new page. And since we're talking about Gutenberg and WordPress, we're not going to talk about page builders and how to use them, but I do have a bunch of tutorials on how to use Elementor, Themify, the WP page builder. So if you ever want to install one of those plugins and learn how to use them to create custom layouts and everything, you can always watch one of my videos on NYC tech club and we can always create more too. So just let me know which page builder that you like, and we can always just go through those. So right now, what I want to do is just talk about what you see on the screen right here. So the first thing that you want to do whenever you create a page is you want to put in your page title. So we're going to create a home page really quickly. So I can just type in home page V1 um, because I do have a home page already, but you can type in something like home right here. And then what you can see is right below it is a section that says start writing or typing or click on the plus button to choose a block. So the different thing about the old version of WordPress and the Gutenberg version is pretty much this. So now there are blocks that you can create for your pages and your posts. And before with the old version of WordPress, you would just have a text box right here where you can put in HTML or text. And then you had a toolbar at the top where you can change the text formatting or add headings and everything like that. So let me just show you. Nowadays you have this plus button here and also one up here. And just a side note, there is an undo button right here and then a redo button right here. And what you can do is you can just start typing if you wanted to. So we can just type in content as much as we want. Or what we can do is push enter and then we can create a new block. And right here you can click on the plus button and you can see that you get this pop up and there are a bunch of different options that you have. So with the block option now that what Gutenberg is doing, is it's letting you structure your page with different layers. So different sections. So you can add a heading at the top, a paragraph, an image, another heading or something like that. So what I can do is first, I can just go back into this first block and click on this more options button and click remove to delete everything. And I can add a few blocks. So maybe first what we'll do is add a heading. So we can go in here and just type in welcome. And if you want to edit the size of this heading, what you can do is hover over this and you can see this little toolbar right here. So you can change the heading sizes. You can change it to bold, italic. You have the link button right here, or you can cross things out. And then you also have the more options button to duplicate this block or insert a block before it or after it or edit HTML or delete this. 
What you also have is this little tab over here called block. And if you don't see the section, that means that you're hiding it. So you click on this little wheel and you can see that my mouse is right here in this block. So this is a heading block. And what you can do is go into the settings right here. So you can make this larger or smaller. You can align the text wherever you want. And then you have this advanced tab also. So we have our first block and then we can create another block right here. So maybe we'll put in an image. So what you can do when you click on the image icon is you can upload your own image by clicking on upload and then finding the image that you want to upload. Or if you have images in your media library, which I'm going to show you how to upload images to it in just a little bit, is if you click on this, you'll come to your media library and you have all of your images right here that you uploaded onto your WordPress website. And you can select the one that you want and just click select. And now you have your image right here. And again, you have the toolbar up here to edit this if you want. And you can also drag this to make it larger or smaller. And you have these other options such as editing and then the more options button right here. So if you don't know what these buttons are, you can always just hover over this stuff and then you'll get this little pop-up that shows you what this button does. And for the images, you can also write a caption, but you can see that we're in this block right here. So over here now in this block section, this is for the image settings. So you can go in here and edit the size of the image. You can come down here and link this to another page if you wanted to. So it's really up to you, but what you want to do is create a bunch of different blocks. So we can create another block here and maybe we'll put in a paragraph block. So we'll just click this and click paragraph and then we can just type some more stuff. And maybe I'll show you how you can link something. So if you want to link some text to another page, just highlight that text and then you'll get this little toolbar and click on this little icon right here that says link. And then you can just type in your URL. So maybe I don't know what ucl.com is. So we'll just type in url.com and click apply. And now you can see the link is right here and you have this more options button. And if you want to open this link in another page or another tab, just turn this on and that's all you have to do. And then again, you can create as many different blocks as you want, or if you're done, then you're good to go. So that's a quick rundown of Gutenberg and the blocks. And you also have down here, if we create a new block, the icons right here for shortcuts. So you can add an image, add a heading, or add a gallery right here. And if your theme allows you to have this page options option right here, I don't know why I just said options option, but that's what it is. And with this theme, we do have the option of hiding the page title and the share icons tab right here. And then if you have a custom slider image, you can insert that. And that depends on the theme. So your page options might be different, or maybe you don't even have the section depending on the theme that you're using. So we've talked about the block tab right here, and this is specific to wherever your mouse is pointed. But what I want to do now is go to the document tab, and this is where you can set the visibility for this page. So right here where it says visibility, if you click on this link, you can make this page public, private, or password protected. Just select which one you want. And then you can also time when you want to publish this page if you want also. And then you can add a featured image if your theme lets you. You can allow comments on this page. And then down in the page attributes, if you open up this tab, you might have a template drop down right here with different options for the template for this page. So right now we're on the default option. And up here, what we can do is click the preview button to see what the page looks like. So I clicked on this button and I'm opening up a new tab right here and we can go and see what the preview page looks like. So this is just what the web page is going to look like whenever it's published. So you can see that this is using the default template for the Scali theme and we have our page title and then we have our content that we created right here. And again, since this is the default option, we have a sidebar right here. But what I can do is go back here and then if I come down to the page attributes and click on the full width option and click preview, what you'll notice now is if I go back to the preview tab, once this loads, the layout's going to look a little different because I chose the full width option. So you can see now we have our page title and then our content and the sidebar is gone. So you probably have some different page options or layout options in this template dropdown that you can choose from. So again, this is specific to your theme. So you can just use whatever you have, or you can always switch your theme if you're not happy with it. And then over here in the permalink section, this is where you can change your permalink. This is the URL for this page right now, 
we are going to go into the settings and show you how to set this home page. So all you have to do is just type in your domain name and it's going to go to the home page in just a little bit. So that's pretty much all I want to say about this. You can always save the draft if you don't want to publish it right now and you can go back and edit the page if you go to all pages and see this page there. You can preview the page and if you're ready, we can just publish this page by clicking on the publish button twice. And what you'll notice is that it's saving right now. And once it's published, you'll see this link right here that says view page. And then you can go and see what the page looks like. If we close out of this, we also have the option of moving this to the trash can if we want to delete this page. And you can also do the same if you click on all pages right here. And we're going to go back to the pages page and you can see that we have a list of pages that I've created before. And this is the one that I just created. You can click on the edit button and that's going to go back to the edit page that you just saw or you can remove this by clicking on the trash button right here. Okay, so that's how you create a page. And again, the confusing thing for some people is just the blocks option and how to use it. So down here you have the plus button and then you can always just add a block. And if you ever wanna type something out and then delete this block, just click on the remove button or come down to the next block and then you can just go in here and just delete everything. So if you want to create some pages, go ahead and do that on your own. What I want to do is show you how to create a blog post page and then go through some of the other options with blog posts so you can see categories and tags. And then once we do that, we'll go into, I guess, talking about the media library and how to upload images to your media library. And then we can go into the settings after that. So if you want, pause the video and create some additional pages. Otherwise, keep watching because now what we're going to do is go into the blog post section. So if you want, we can just jump into that right now by clicking on add new right here. And once you're on the add post page, this is where you can create a blog post. And a blog post is like writing an article. So similar to when you put Facebook posts up or Instagram photos, the more blog posts that you upload, the older ones are going to get pushed down onto the older pages or further along. So you won't always see your older blog posts as easily. So that's the difference between a blog post where you have a blog page that has all of your posts and a regular page. So just like a page on WordPress, creating a blog post, all you're going to do is just type in your title right here and we can just type in blogging for our title and then this is where you can write your content so again you can just type everything out or you can add blocks and you can format your images or your text so we can add an image right here just for fun we'll go into the media library and we'll insert this image right here and then we can just write some more and again if you wanted to you can always format this text by highlighting it you have the link icon right here, or you can bold the stuff or italicize it. You can cross it out. You can do pretty much anything that you want. So that's how you can create a blog post. And again, it's very similar to creating a page. You're going to have these blocks right here and you can write out your content. If you have this post option section, then you can change the post layout. But again, it depends on the plugins that you have and also the theme that you're using. And same with the slider image over here. And then again, you have the block settings over here for your different blocks. And in the document settings over here, there are a few different things that you see on the blog post page that you don't see on the post page. So again, you have the status and visibility. So this stuff isn't any different. If your theme lets you, you can stick this blog post to the front page by sticking or clicking on this option. That's really theme specific. You might not have that option, but you will have categories and tags and categories are ways for you to um, categorize your blog posts and kind of separate them or filter them. So I've already created some category names, but you can always type in a new one right here. So we can just type in something like new category and to insert that you just push enter and then you'll see the category get added here. And if you want to put this blog post in one of these categories, you want to make sure that this box is checked for that category name and you can add this to as many different categories as you want. And then same goes with tags. Tags are very similar to category names. They're another way to filter or kind of search for your blog posts. So you can type in something like fashion and we can just separate these with commas and we can type in design and put a comma right there. And if you want to add a featured image, you can just go in here and again, you can go into your media library or you can go and upload files, click on select files and then upload an image right there. So maybe we'll just select 
one of these images right here. So we'll use this one and click select and you should see the featured image show up right here. So this usually shows up next to the blog post or at the top of the page when you have a blog post. And then down here you have the excerpt tab. So if you want to have a little excerpt that people can kind of see on the home page or whatever blog page that you have about what your blog post is about, or maybe the first few sentences that you can type, you can type that in right here. And then you have the option down here of allowing comments or disallowing them for this blog post. And in your settings, you also have the option of selecting whether or not by default you want to allow comments on your blog post or not. And that's in this discussion section that we'll go over in just a little bit. So pretty much a blog post is really, really easy. The only difference is having a category section and also the tag section. And you can always go and edit those or add them in this little section underneath your blog post section over here. So we can go into those next, but really quickly I can just publish this. You also have that preview button, but we'll just publish this just to save it. And then we can go and check it out really quickly. So once it's saved, I'm gonna click on view post and open up a new tab. And now we can go and check out our blog post and we have our featured image right here and then our category names and our title and then our content section right here. And you can see we have our tags down here. So that's how you create a blog post. And again, it's very simple, very similar to the blog or WordPress pages where you have blocks and you can always go in and edit these. And if you ever want to edit your blog posts or delete them, go to all posts. So just hover over posts and click on all posts. And then you'll come to this page with all your different blog posts and you can just go and hover over the one that you want to edit and then click on the edit link. And then you're going to go back to the page that we're just on right here. And again, you can change the visibility. You can switch this to a draft. So right now it's published and everyone can see it, but if you want, you can always change it back to a draft just like this. And then once it saves, it's not going to be published anymore. Okay. So that's how you create pages and posts. And really quickly, I want to go to the categories links and also the tags link just to show you how you can edit your categories or get rid of some of them if you want. So we can do that. But before I actually go, let me just show you over here because I almost forgot to mention this. There is the content structure section. So on your pages and posts, you can click on this and then you can see how many words you have, how many headings, paragraphs, and blocks you have for your page or post. So that's just a little interesting. Um, tidbit that you can look at. Okay. So now what we're going to do is cover categories and tags for your blog post. So I'm going to click on the categories link right here, and then that's what we're going to cover next. And once you're on the categories page, you can see a list of all the categories that you've already created right here. And you can always go and edit these or delete them. And if you wanted to create a new category for your blog post, you can actually do that right here also. So we can type in a new category and let me just think about what category I can type in. I guess we can just type in WordPress right here. And then for the slug, we'll just type in the same thing. And if you wanted to make a parent category and make this a subcategory, you would go in here and select one of these other categories that would be the parent category. And then this new one would be a subcategory. We're going to make this a main category or its own category. So we're not going to put in a parent and just click add new and we should see this category get added right here. So now we have our new category right here. And right now we don't have any blog posts that are categorized as WordPress. So you can see the count zero, but we have these other ones and we have like five blog posts that are lifestyle categories and then six that are travel. And those are ones that I created for the demo WordPress website before I created this video. So that's a simple and easy way to edit your category names or create new ones. And then same goes with tags. So let me click on the tags link right here. And that's going to bring us to the tag page. And you can see that we have a bunch of different tags similar to categories. We just created these as I made blog posts and then we can delete any of these if we want. So if you wanted to add a new tag, you would just put in the new tag name right here and then just type in the same thing for the slug and then click on add new tag and then you'll see it added right here. And then you can also do this when you create blog posts. So you just go back to those sections where they had those little tabs and go into your categories, type in categories or check the ones that you want and same with tags. So that's all we're going to cover for blog posts. If you have any questions about pages or posts or how to create them, the blocks, how to edit your pages, or even if you want to learn how to use a page builder, leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the next section. 
And what I want to cover now is I want to talk about the sidebar for your blog post page because we just talked about blog posts and you saw that little sidebar on the blog post page. So I want to show you how you can actually customize that. So what we're going to do is hover over appearance and click on widgets. And once you're on the widgets page, you're going to see a bunch of different widgets here. And widgets are little boxes or little tools that you can add to the sidebar and sometimes to your footer. You can see that we have a sidebar right here. So this is where we would drag some widgets into. And then if you have a footer section or another sidebar or something, then you can drag some additional widgets into this section. But by default, you probably should have a sidebar for your blog pages or at least the sidebar option. So there are a bunch of widgets here. A lot of them are default widgets that WordPress prov provides to you. And others are going to be widgets that you get when you download a plugin. And so we have our easy Facebook like box right here. If you recall earlier in this video, we installed this plugin. So what we can do is click and drag this into our sidebar right here. And sometimes there's some customization that you can do. So I can go in here and change this to NYC Tech Club to add my own fan page URL right here. And then if I wanted to, I can change the width of this box, but we'll leave this as is just like this. And we want to click the save button whenever you go and add one of these widgets into this section. And if you ever want to delete any of these, you can just click and expand and click on the delete link. And that's going to make this widget disappear. So you probably have a sidebar. I don't know if the theme that you're using is going to have a footer section, but you will have this. And what you can do is just drag whatever type of widgets that you want in. And if you don't know what all of these are, then the best way to figure that out is to really just drag this stuff in and then you can play around with it. So what I want to do is now that I have my widgets added to my sidebar, I want to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to go back to my home page because I know there's a sidebar down here if I scroll down. So you can see now that I've added this Facebook like box and it has the Facebook like box right here. We can probably make this a little larger if we wanted, but this is my sidebar and these are all different widgets. You can see that they have titles right at the top. So that's what a widget section is or your sidebar section. And that's how you can customize it. So if you want, we can just go to our widgets. You can pause the video and add whatever type of widgets that you want to your own sidebar. And then once you're ready, push play and we'll move on to the next step, which is going to be talking about the media library and uploading images to your media library. Otherwise, we're just going to move on right now. So if you want, we're going to go to our media library and talk about uploading images. So let's click on library. And now you should be in the media library. And this is where I uploaded all of my different images for my blog website. But if this is your first time coming to the media library and you don't have any images, then what you can do is you can add your images in bulk or you can add them as you create posts and pages and just upload images individually. But if you want to add a bunch of images or videos or documents to your media library so that you can access whenever you create a page or post, all you have to do is click on the add new button right here and then click on select files and then find the images or documents or videos that you want to upload and then just upload them and then they'll be saved onto your server and in this section right here. So it's really easy to upload files. So I'm not going to go through the other steps, but really you just click on add new, click on select files and then go into your computer and find the images that you want. The other cool thing about having images or stuff in your media library is you can edit the images here. So what we can do is click on this image right here and we'll get this pop up and we can edit this image. You can see we have some details right here. If we want to edit this image, we can just click on edit image and then we'll come to this page right here and you can see your image right here. And what you can do is you can crop this image by selecting the area that you want to crop and then just click on this. And then you can see that it crops it. You can rotate the image or you can rotate it back and you have all these other options right here. You can also change the size of the image if you want. You're just going to change it right here and click scale. And you can do these changes to any number of options that you want thumbnails or all of your images or all different sizes and everything like that. If you do make any changes, you want to click on save right here. I'm going to click cancel right here because I don't want to actually make any changes, but I did want to show you this edit feature that you have when you upload images into your media library. 
Okay, so if you ever want to delete any of this stuff, you can just select these or actually click on bulk select. So you can just select these. And then if you wanted to delete them, you can click on this button right here. So again, we're not going to do any of that. And that's pretty much it. There are some additional options for the default settings or sizes for your thumbnails or images when you upload them onto your pages and posts. That's gonna be covered in the settings section, which we're gonna cover next. So if you wanna upload some images right now, you can do that on your own. Otherwise, we're just gonna move on. If you have any questions about the media library or uploading images, videos, or documents, let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, we're gonna move on and we wanna go through the settings. So this is gonna be probably the last thing that we're gonna cover in the WordPress tutorial. So if you need, you can take a break. Otherwise, what I want you to do is just hover over settings and then click on the general section and then I'll see you in the next section. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover our settings for our WordPress website. And I believe this is gonna be the last section that we cover for how to use WordPress using the Gutenberg version. We pretty much covered everything else. So if you wanna to come to the general settings, just make sure that you hover over settings and click on general. And we'll cover this stuff pretty quickly because it's really, really easy. What you can do in the general settings is you can change your site title and your tagline right here if you want. You can see that they show up right here on this tab. And if you want to change your WordPress address, if you want to add the www dot, you can do that right here. And if you have an SSL certificate, you can add the S right here. I recommend that you don't touch this section unless you really, really know what you're doing. Or if you're watching a video tutorial and it tells you to make some changes, otherwise don't touch this section because if you mess it up, it's going to make your website impossible to access and you might have to delete everything and restart if you don't know how to make some changes. So you can also edit the email address associated with this WordPress website here. And you have a bunch of different options. You can go and just pause this video and check out this stuff here. If you make any changes, you wanna click on save changes. So I didn't make any changes, but if you do, just make sure that you click on the button at the bottom. I'm gonna move on to the next section. So we're gonna click on writing right here. And for the writing settings, what you can do is choose the default post category right here if you don't like the uncategorized option. And then same with the post formatting. So we just stay with the standard option. So click on save changes if you do make any changes. But again, I don't really go into the writing settings. So what I wanna do is talk about readings. So I'm gonna go to the reading section because this is where you can choose your homepage displays. And this might be the most important thing for this section because if you don't want just a blog website with WordPress and you wanna have an actual homepage and a blog page, what you can do is select this option where it says a static page and then you wanna choose the page that you wanna make the homepage. So you can see we created this page a little earlier called homepage v1. So if I select this page, it's gonna make it the homepage. So whenever I go to my website name, it'll go to this page that I created. And then if I created a blog post page, I can select that page right here. And then that would be my blog page, but I don't have one. So I'll just leave that as unselected. And again, if I wanted to have a home page for this page, then I would just go in here and select the page that I want. But I'm gonna keep mine as a WordPress blog. So I'm not gonna do that. But if you do do that, which I think a lot of people do because when they create a general website or an e-commerce website, they wanna have a specific home page. That's just not all their blog posts they're gonna come into this section and select the homepage that they wanna set, okay? So if you do make any changes, you wanna click on save changes right here, and there are some options down here for how many blog posts to show and all that stuff, but that's really up to you. If you make changes, click on the save changes button, and then once everything is saved, I want you to click on the discussion link right here. And this is where we can talk about whether or not by default we wanna let people leave comments on our blog posts. So you can go in here and you can look at all these different setting options and check the boxes for the settings that you want. If you don't want any of these settings, then you wanna uncheck these boxes. So you can see right here that we allow people to post comments on new articles. If we don't wanna allow people to post comments, we can just uncheck this. And then if we don't care to have people fill out their name and email, we can uncheck this also. So these are the default settings by WordPress and you can go in here and select whatever you want. It's really, really easy. And then just make sure that you come down to the bottom and click save changes if you make any changes. Okay, so that's how you can moderate 
who can leave comments and who can't, or if you don't want to have comments at all, then you can just come in here and do that. So I'm going to go to the media link because this is where you can set the sizes for your images. You can see here in the media settings, you have your thumbnail size, your medium and large size. And these are the default sizes by I think pixel. So if you want to change these, go ahead and just change the numbers to whatever sizes you want and then click save changes here again. I like a lot of the WordPress default settings. I think that they've done a lot of research in terms of what works and what's good. So I don't really make too many changes, but if you make any changes, click on the save changes button. And the last thing that we're going to do is just come to the permalinks link. So click on that. And this is where you can select the type of URL that you want for your website and for your different pages and posts. So by default, I think you have this plain option. So it has like P and then a number. And that's a little weird. It's not really good for SEO and stuff like that. So the one that I usually recommend is the post name option because it'll have your URL. So your website name.com and then usually the page or blog post title at the end over here. So you can also have a custom structure if you want. If you make any changes, click on the save changes button. And again, it's all really up to you what you want to select. You don't, there's no real right or wrong one. So it's up to you. And let's go to the privacy tab actually and click on this really quickly just to talk about this because I think privacy policy pages are pretty important nowadays, um, especially in certain countries. So if you want to have a privacy policy page, you can use the default one that WordPress gives you. So there's a default one that you can check out and then click on use page or you can create your own and you can check out that page over here. There are some links and I guess WordPress kind of took privacy policy really, really um, made it really important, I guess, um, and serious recently. So they have the section now. This is a little different than the older versions of WordPress. So we can preview this if you want. So this is what the privacy policy page is going to look like. If you just use the WordPress one, there's a bunch of stuff that you can just add in your own information. So you like your contact information right here, but they kind of set everything up for you. So it's really up to you what you want to do. WordPress does a great job of laying out all the different settings and everything. You can also create a new page and these other two, these are plugins. So I'm not going to cover them because they're probably not on your own WordPress websites unless you have the same plugins as I do. So pretty much these are your settings for WordPress. And again, the most important things to talk about here or highlight are the reading tab where you can set the homepage and the blog post page if you want. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the dashboard right here because pretty much we are done covering everything in this WordPress tutorial using the Gutenberg version. And we've talked about everything from the dashboard, user profiles and passwords, creating themes, what are themes, um, customizing our website with the customized tab. We've talked about plugins, how to install them, pages and posts, categories. I'm looking at my list over here, tags, category names, widgets, the media library and how to, how to upload images. And then we covered our settings. So the only other thing that we have to do is really talk about how to build a WordPress website. And we can't cover that in this video tutorial, but again, I do have a bunch of them. They're really, really long. They're a couple hours long. They go into everything. They go step by step and you can also get a refresher on how to use WordPress watching that stuff. So, I'll link you to some of those videos. I'll also recommend some other plugins for you guys, but I'm going to, you know, end this video right here because I think we covered a lot and I have kind of laid out everything that you need to know on how to use WordPress using the Gutenberg version. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. I'm going to turn this back to just me on the screen and have some final words and then I'll send you guys on your way. So there you guys have it. This is my tutorial on how to use WordPress using the Gutenberg version. It was kind of quick, but not too quick. We covered a lot and hopefully you guys got everything that you need to really go and work with WordPress on your own. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section below. And we always come out with new videos just like this. And if you guys have any recommendations or need help, let me know in the comment section and I'll make a new video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.